Hey everybody, it's me again. I shot a video recently uh, talking about nitrates in a tank. In fact, I've shot a few videos talking about nitrates in our tanks. And every time I shoot a video about nitrates, I always wind up having to do a few follow-up videos and it winds up um, stirring up a discussion. It's always a little controversial what my opinions about nitrates in our fish tanks are. And that's fine. That's pretty much why I put the videos out there. I want it to generate uh, a conversation. So as part of this conversation, I want to talk about um, chasing perfection in our tanks. And a lot of people have taken that to mean that I'm talking about chasing perfect numbers, like trying to achieve the perfect water hardness and the perfect pH. And I do want to talk about those things, but I want to sort of separate that into a different video. In this video, I want to talk about sort of a different aspect of perfection that we chase in this hobby. And it's kind of strange to me. And I'm having a hard time getting this video out because a lot of different factors sort of roll into this. If, you, if anybody knows me personally, I, if you get me going, I can go and we could do hours worth of video here uh, nonstop. I have the gift of gab, no doubt. And all these sort of topics are kind of jumbling in together. One aspect of it is just the fact that we call this a hobby. But some people think about them as their pets. So are we talking about a hobby? Or are we talking about keeping pets? Because I have cats and dogs, and I think of those as my pets. I don't think of them as a hobby. They're part of my family. They're part of my life. They're animals in my house. My fish are a hobby. You know, I know they are living animals that are in my care, but that, I still don't view them as pets. And so we're already starting to get into some sort of you know, what is your perception of these animals versus what is my perception of these animals. So then we get into this aspect of perfection in their environments, perfection in the fish tanks, and that's what stems from this video uh, I shot recently about the nitrates. I was simply stating in the video that nitrates are not this deadly killer, they don't have this immediate toxic impact on your fish the way ammonia or nitrites does. If you look up what does ammonia do to a fish, you will find very specific, it does this, 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 and this is why your fish dies. If you look up nitrites, it's the same thing. You can find very specific reasons of what it's doing to your fish and why they're dying. Try finding that for nitrates. You can't because it's not out there. What you find is studies suggest long-term exposure has this impact and studies indicate that long-term exposure has that impact. And that's all fine. It might be true. It might have those long-term impacts. But that's just it. It's long-term impacts and that's where that video sort of started getting into splitting hairs. I wasn't trying to indicate that there's no impact whatsoever um, by exposing your fish to these higher levels of nitrates. And when I say higher levels of nitrates, I'm talking about within the reasonable numbers that a lot of us fish keepers struggle to keep them in. 40, 50, 60 parts per million. I'm not talking about neglect. I'm not talking about 200, 300 parts per million as I've seen in some cases. That's just neglect. You shouldn't be keeping fish if you're just not willing to take any care of them at all. That's not what I'm talking about. But where do you draw that line? And that is what I'm talking about, you know. Um, I have people say to me about the, the nitrates, you know that, that, that it's going to shorten the lifespan of the fish, and you know, it might, but it might not. I don't know that it will shorten the lifespan of the fish. Uh, I had a cat die at six years old because it threw a blood clot. Was that because I wasn't feeding it premium quality food? I doubt it. It was just one of them things that happened. And sometimes fish die before they live to be full age, and sometimes they live to be a very old age. And sometimes it's, you know, the nitrate levels in tanks could be one way or the other. I've seen pristine tanks with fish that died young, and I've seen people that have kept fish forever in tanks where they barely ever did water changes. So this, this idea that, you know, you're a bad fish keeper because you've got 40 parts per million or 50 parts per million in your fish tank. I've been attacked by people because I don't, you know, I use just like Marineland brand food. I don't go out and spend all this money, you know. I don't spend $25 a bag for little bags of dog food for my dog or my cats either. I just go out and buy a decent quality cat food. Is that going to shorten their life by a month or two at the end of their life? It might. I don't know. Maybe. I don't care. You know, and it's the same way with my fish. I, it's just, it, it's bizarre to me that the, the, the same people that probably are attacking me for not using the premium quality food for my fish don't think anything is stopping and getting some fast food occasionally. You know, they put 
crap food in their own bodies, yet are going to give me a hard time because I don't go out and spend ridiculous amounts of money on the premium quality food. I don't pull my hair out trying to keep my nitrates at 10 part per million because it's the pristine condition that that fish needs to be in. I just find it strange that we strive for this level of perfection in something like a fish, yet we don't seem to strive for that level of perfection in our own lives or our own environment and the air we breathe and the food we eat. We have, you know, dogs that if you've got a, a Rottweiler or like a big working dog, do you give it tasks to do and do you give it the proper exercise? Is, you know, do you live in an apartment but have a border collie? Because that's not fair, and that's not treating that animal properly. And you know, you don't hear people. Well, I guess some people do, but it's it's just not as typical as it is in this hobby. In this hobby, it just seems like you know you get attacked if you don't achieve perfection. I just I find that fascinating. Actually, I've had people attack me for having two skirt tetras in a tank because they should be kept in schools of five. I've been called cruel because of that. I've been called cruel because I haven't had a proper school of neons in a tank. You know, or I've had five skirt tetras in a 10 gallon tank and they should be in a 25 gallon tank and therefore I'm some terrible fish keeper. I'm like, I just, seriously, people get really worked up over this kind of stuff in the fish keeping hobby and I just don't get that. I don't understand that. So, yes, I understand that if my nitrates in my fish tank are 60 parts per million for the duration of my fish's life for all five years that my fish are in there, yes, maybe at the end of that five years they might not live five years in one month, they might die at five years, or they might not, you know, <laughs> something else might happen. I've seen people that keep amazing fish tanks, but they've unfortunately had to shoot videos explaining how all their fish died because they accidentally dosed the wrong medication, or they mis mistakenly measured some additive they were putting in the tank, or they forgot about this aspect, or they bumped their heater, or a hundred other things that happen, and, and their fish all die. So I'm not going to pull what little thinning hair I have left out trying to keep perfect conditions for these fish. I do my best to keep them in good quality condition. Anybody that looks at my tanks, anybody that watches my videos, you can, I stand by what I say, you can look at my tanks and I do a good job of keeping my fish. I don't have mass deaths, I don't have big die-offs, I don't have tank crashes. I've never had any of those issues. And I don't worry about perfection. I enjoy my hobby. I like my fish tanks. I have fun with them. If I don't feel like doing a water change tonight, I don't do a water change tonight. I'll do it tomorrow when I feel like doing it. I get down here, I get some music on. Right now, it's a hassle, so I don't do it. The people that like stop what they're doing and they can't get to sleep because they're worried about the nitrates are too high in their tank because they measured them and they're 40 parts per million, those people are the ones, to me, that have been misled. I know some people claim I'm the one putting bad information out there, but if you're losing sleep because your fish are in 40 parts of, per million of nitrates and you can't get the bed because your fish are suffering, then you're suffering unduly. You know, you've been misled about how dangerous these nitrates are. Do your water change tomorrow. You do want to maintain as low in nitrates as possible. And I'll also throw out there, if you're one of those people that likes doing jigsaw puzzles in the dark, if you think accounting is fun, you know, if that's your personality and you love perfection and you, you, you know, to you it's fun to try to keep a tank at, you know, nine parts per million nitrates and you want the, this exact hardness and if, if that's how you roll and if that's your thing, knock yourself out, have a good time. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with keeping your nitrates really low or, you know, fiddling with your tank within reason. And again, we'll get into that other video about doing too much to your tank. You can definitely do more damage to your tank by doing too many water changes, too frequent water changes, you know, you stressing out about getting those nitrates down to 10 parts per million and doing constant water changes, do you know what you're doing to the pH in your tank? Do you know what you're doing to the water's hardness in your tank? Do you know how much CO2 you're putting in the tank with every water change and how much of that off gases overnight? Does your pH shift over 24 hours? You know, and unless you really understand a lot of this stuff that's going on, doing massive frequent water changes can really do a lot more damage to your fish than simply leaving them be in 40 parts per million nitrate. You know, again, if, if you know what you're doing and you're one of those people that is just 
you want that perfect tank and you want crystal clear water at every moment without one spot of algae anywhere and that's your thing then have at it you know that's my thing and I just find it fascinating that people attack me over my non-perfection in my fish tanks I just find that really fascinating so I wanted to get that out there and just sort of get that aspect of it um, out that it's okay not to be perfect in your fish tank it's okay if you don't do your water change every single week uh, you know, if you miss a couple days or you go two weeks or whatever, this is supposed to be an enjoyable hobby. And I think maybe where some of it comes from is the fact that, let's say with a cat or a dog, some an animal like that, as, as odd as it may sound at first, you know, that, those animals are so similar to us. We can understand they need to go outside, they need to do their business, they need water to drink, they need food to eat, you know, they need a place to sleep. Fish are just sort of outside our experience and they're very different very alien to us and when we first get into the hobby we don't know anything about them other than we keep them in boxes of water and they have a filter and then you begin learning about the nitrogen cycle and it starts getting complicated and you start saying okay there's more going on here than I realized and suddenly now you're sort of outside your comfort zone and so you rely on doing it the way you're told to do it I was told to do this I was told to do that and that's fine you all, we need some place to start you know you, you gotta have you Know, like the inch of fish per gallon of water rule there that's not a hard and fast rule but to somebody who's just entering into the hobby you got to tell them something you got to give them something to go on and that's a good place to start you know telling you arbitrarily that 40 parts per million nitrates is probably where you know most experts agree most people think over time you know experience seems to tell us that this is about where you know it's time to start doing a water change and get your water cleaned out and remineralized and you know it's just time to do a water change then how that's morphed into this idea and this is fairly new if you go 30 years ago in the hobby you talk to some old timers they didn't even know about nitrates they didn't care about nitrates this is new in the hobby now that's not to say it's meaningless there's lots of new medicines and new science and there's all kind of new stuff that's great but just because this it, it's the science is still isn't there to support this stuff yet it's it's hints at there's issues and it's a good idea to keep them low and you know, it's always better to do the water changes and keep them low, but there's no real science that says this is what nitrates do to your fish, this is how they die, there's no... It's just not there. It's, it's it, the, 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 the toxicity that this, this nitrates are made out to be is just over-exaggerated in a lot of cases. Just stay on top of your water changes, keep your tanks within reason, don't stress out about them all the time, don't freak out about them, you're supposed to be enjoying this hobby, and again, we can continue from here I'm sure I've riled somebody up I'm sure I've got somebody's shackles up so let me know what you think and you know give me your opinions about whether or not um, you know the, the, the hobby aspect of it versus the pet aspect of it should we care more about fish or less about fish does it matter you know where do you draw the line is it okay to keep a fish in a box of water rather than letting it live out naturally and if you're going to keep it in a box of water where do you draw the line between how much of a box of water there's a lot of aspects of it where we all sort of arbitrarily decide what's okay and what's not and so this whole idea of trying to achieve this sort of perfection this perfect balance of you know what the perfect size tank and you know perfect size tank is the river it came from you know, that's where it should be if we want to start getting into perfection. So why people just get so, I don't know, the, people get very passionate about their views. I guess that's pretty much the case with anything. But anyway, I'm going to start to ramble. Like I said, I can wander off on four different tangents here while we sit and talk. So let me know your thoughts. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll do plenty more videos like this if people enjoy them or want to see them. Uh, don't forget, this one here is my T-Bar tank. This one here is my Garami tank. Thanks for watching this one, and I'll see you real soon in the next one.